Live right here. You cannot be seen over here. You can only be seen over here. Alright, then I'm going to go. Welcome everybody. It's Saturday Night Live at 5. Enjoy some time of worship and a powerful prophetic message here in just a little bit. I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. I want to invite you to share the post. Share with somebody. People will get saved. People will get healed. People will get delivered. All you have to do is share the post. So share it now and get ready to enjoy a powerful time of worshiping the King, Jesus.
What's up, everybody? We love you. Worship the Lord with us.
pray. Keep playing, but let's just pray into this. Every time the, when the glory breaks out, worship opens heavens. And when the worship comes and the heavens open, and then you begin to pray from an open heaven, there's an acceleration on the result of your prayer. So let's pray. And we want to we invite you, if you're watching right now, join us in a time of prayer. Let's pray and let's believe God to do something powerful in our midst today. Lord, we thank you right now that there's healing in your wings. Psalm 91, you hide us in the shelter of the shadow of the Almighty. Lord, we're asking right now that you would sweep this land, sweep this nation, God. Sweep it clean of any landmines against the things of the Spirit. And we ask, God, that you would neutralize the effects of the enemy. Lord, he comes only to rob, kill, and destroy, but you came to give us life and life more abundant. Jesus, you are the healer, and you have healed us. We celebrate our resurrection power that you gave us. You are the resurrection and the life. No man comes to the Father God but by you. You are the door. You are the way. You are the truth. You are the life. You are the source of our strength. You are our passion and our love. You are the reason that we gather to worship you. Lord, I thank you that there's no distance between us and you because you live on the inside of us. We received you and your Holy Spirit, God in us, the hope of glory. God, we ask right now, you begin to break the yokes of bondage across this nation, Lord. We bind the spirit of fear. I serve an eviction notice by faith right now to every demonic assignment, every occult spirit, every demonic thing that's been sent out against the children of God, against the house of God. We say you are void and useless. You are nullified. Your effects shall not work on the children of God. Lord, we thank you that we are blessed in your sight, that we are your children, that for such a time as this, that you called us to come together and begin to pray. You said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, that you would hear us and that you would take the case and that you would rule in our favor. Jesus, our defense attorney, our advocate. Father God, I thank you that the heavens are your throne and the earth is your footstool and that you chose us to rule and reign. You gave us authority on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we receive this truth. We receive this truth by faith. Would you give us a fresh touch of heaven today? Would you increase the fire that's upon your children in this hour? Lord, even those who are watching from their homes, watching from their cars, watching from their offices, Lord, would you set them free once and for all? Would you embolden them? Would you fill them with hope that will not disappoint? Would you show them your love? Cast out the demon spirit called fear. Lord, would you bring forth the mercy of heaven upon the land and the revelation of your goodness that leads your people to repentance. Lord, repentance that turns into a revival. Lord, I thank you that in this time there's people diving into new depths of prayer. That there's many people who have been medicating themselves, Lord. Would you set them free and deliver the laughter that worketh like a medicine? Would you release your joy tonight, God? <laughs> would, you re <laughs> would you release the joy, God? We release joy in this city. We release joy in this this region. We release joy over Washington State, over Washington, D.C. Let the joy of the Lord become the strength of your people that no weapon formed against us can prosper. Lord, that you called something forth in the Northwest. It's a revival like what we seen. It has been prophesied. We receive that revival by faith. We release it over the churches of the cities, God. We release it. Lord, we agree. Fan the flames. Fan the flames. Fan the flames. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I see the Lord just whoosh like this. Breathing on the flames. We got this fire crackling over here. People gathered around, worshiping the Lord. Freedom open to the elements right here at the edge of the water. We're here in Gig Harbor. Jesus is doing a mighty work in our midst. People are being healed as we speak. Testimonies are about to emerge from, from this meeting to give glory to God. And the testimony is a prophecy about what God will do again and another who hears it. Lord, we thank you right now that there's people who have testimonies that are just so radical that you healed them. Because Jesus, you heal. Jesus, you deliver. You make all things new. Nothing is impossible. Lord, I thank you, God, that you're showing us that all things are possible. You're bringing an unwavering faith. An unwavering faith. It's undeniable. There's no doubt about it.
you're shutting doubt out. You're raising up a believing, praying people. People divinely connected in the glory. S uh, setting up a banner. Raising up a flag. Saying, you know what? We are his people. And he is our good shepherd. We praise you, Lord. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Some people are wondering what in the heck is going on. Well, there's several things that the Lord is doing right now, and uh, that's that's actually fine. Dude. So, here here's a few things that I was reminded of this that the Lord said that here's here's what He's doing right now on the earth. Uh, there's many things He's doing, but these are a few that He mentioned. He said, "I'm creating God encounters. I'm creating God encounters so that the reality." of the unseen can be seen. You hear those seagulls? That's pretty cool. We like the sound of seagulls. We're right here in this beautiful park by the water. Isn't this great? Look at this. This is what I'm doing. I'm creating, the Lord says, God encounters so that the reality of the unseen can be seen. That's what he's doing, folks. He said, I'm allowing people to see how vulnerable they really are. Have you been feeling a little vulnerable? I know a lot of people have been feeling a little bit of uncertainty. Maybe, maybe you feel a little turbulence, a little unsettled. But God is settling people in their faith to prepare for something so incredibly awesome. 
that what we're about to see is like nothing that we've ever seen before. He's about to take us to the next glory. And so number three, he says, I'm giving a window of time. This is a good one. I am giving a window of time that is short for my true followers, my true followers to repent and draw near. To repent and draw near. This is a great time, even if you've done this before many times, to search your heart. Try not to move. It's squeaking. Yeah, to search your heart. This is a great time to search your heart and ask yourself the question, is there any error in my way? Is there anything in me that I'm doing, any, any habitual pattern that I know that God would not approve of? And if that's something that you're identifying with, uh, let the Lord convict you. The Holy Spirit convicts us of all truth and helps us to repent. Repent just means change your mind and then direction. So it's like, okay, well, I thought that was okay to compromise, and now I realize, no, it's actually not okay. The Lord is coming back for a bride that's been re made ready, so he's purifying his bride. Why would he purify his bride? Because he's pure, and he's holy, and sin separates us from God positionally, even though nothing can separate us from his love. So we sometimes withdraw from God. Remember that song? Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Remember that? Come thou found. Remember? And why are we prone to wander? Well, because there's a sin nature. The flesh wants to be satisfied. But what happens when you feed the Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord gets very strong, and the flesh does not have to dictate your outcome. The flesh does not have to dictate your outcome. You could be winning right now when it seems like everyone's losing because of the grace of God on your life and the power of God is mighty to save. Watch this. I am creating. This is another thing he's doing. I am creating a massive awakening that will sweep this planet. Come on. I know that the Lord is speaking this and he's saying, this is what I'm doing. You wonder what's happening? Well, the enemy's always going to try to create problems and fear tactics and try to get a whole bunch of people worried and unsettled and uncertain. Like, I don't even know what I believe anymore. Some people say, you know what? The truth is, the Lord's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You think he's worried? <laughs> I promise he is not worried about anything. He's the beginning and the end. He starts with the end in mind. He knows where he's going. I read the back of the book, and we win. <laughs> <laughs> I am creating a massive awakening, says the Lord, that will sweep the planet. Come on. Agree with that. <laughs> God's preparing a massive awakening where His Spirit is about to pour out on all flesh. Where sons and daughters will prophesy and old men will dream dreams and young men see visions. Where these signs will follow those who believe. They will cast out demons. They will heal the sick. They will cleanse the lepers. And even some people who are feeling socially like misfits. You're about to come back out of your homes and start to socialize again. Uh, you can't really stop the church because the church that God sets up, that's built on the rock, who is Jesus, the gates of hell will not prevail against. It doesn't matter what a, a political leader says. It doesn't matter what a rich politician says or a rich person that's buying politicians. That doesn't matter. You know what matters? What Jesus says. Because Jesus always has the final say. And no one's mightier than Jesus. No one's got more money in the bank than Jesus. Amen? Come on. You need something? Go after Jesus. Go after the kingdom. He didn't say, seek first Bill Gates. He said, seek first the kingdom of heaven. And all the other things will be added unto you. Yeah. Bill Gates will go bankrupt. And guess what? God is the restorer, but only after people repent and turn from their wicked ways. Then he'll heal their land. So, Bill Gates, I hope you see this. And I hope you repent, truly, because Jesus loves you in spite of your pandemic plan here we go i am creating a massive awakening that will sweep the planet Ooh, the rumbling is here do you feel it come on the rumbling Rabasaba. here it comes you can see the people of god rising up with a scepter they're going to rise up the staff is amazing i had a vision today of a big giant boat i see this big giant boat and the staff was up but the sail was not the staff was up that's spiritual authority, by the way. The mask, the mask. Do you know those things are called masks? 
Isn't it a mast, the thing that holds the sail? Yes. So there's this mast, and I saw the word mast, and then I saw mask. What's a mask? The mask represents hypocrisy. What is it? The Lord's sending a prophetic message. Don't be a hypocrite. I'm not saying don't wear a mask. Like some places require a mask. I personally don't wear a mask. You don't see me sweating and shaking in my boots. Why? Because I have faith in God. He said, no weapon formed against me can prosper. And I actually believe the Bible. Yeah. Imagine that. Believing believers are out there. I promise. There's a bunch of them right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun to be a believing believer. Yes. Listen, some people went to school to learn how to not have faith. They paid a lot of money to lose their faith. And now they're governed by a spirit of unbelief so that when real faith shows up, they ridicule it and mock it. Why? Because there's a demon spirit called unbelief that tries to make faith look resist uh, to, to make faith look ridiculous. And why would the spirit, the demon called unbelief that comes out by prayer and fasting, why would that spirit try to mock and make real faith look ridiculous? Well, because it doesn't want you or me to have real biblical faith. But faith has to do something. If we say, oh, I believe God, I believe God, and we don't even act on our faith, then our faith is not real and we've deceived ourselves. However, if we know what God is saying to us and we hear the word of the Lord because we're tentative to listen to his voice, guess what happens? All of a sudden, faith is imparted because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Jesus is the word, he became flesh. So again, Jesus speaks to us through the word of God, the Bible, you know, and we read it, what happens? The faith shield is formed. And the faith filled by eating the word. Remember he said, eat my flesh. He was talking about the word became flesh. Eat my words. Listen to what I'm saying and then eat that. Consume what I'm saying. Jesus fed on my will, my food is to do the will of my father. I only do what I see my father do and I only say what I hear my father say. So Jesus is a great model. He is the model of what it looks like to perfectly obey the father. So then he says, uh, Whew, there's a rumbling. I feel the rumbling in the spirit. This is such an exciting time to be alive. You should be so excited right now that God chose you to be born when you were born so you can see the greatest move of the spirit that's ever been witnessed on the planet. It has been prophesied by many great and mighty men and women of the faith over the years that this time frame that we're living in right now, and you can see the turbulence. It's always hardest just before the finish line. Have you ever run a race? You run a race, it's not harder at the beginning. It's harder right at the point of transition just before you step over that finish line. So this is what God is doing. He's preparing us to be made ready so that we'll fully depend on him, so that we'll develop real faith to be able to weather any storm. And then he's going to trust us with a mighty move of God, with a move of God, with a move of the Spirit. Revival unto awakening revive make new awaken wake up he's waking up the bride to the reality he makes all things new he was telling the church for years go outside the four walls the church is not a building the church is a people now people listen to what i'm saying this is the great commission go ye therefore now and they weren't going they were staying they were sticking sticking with aunt martha sticking with uncle joe sticking with Joe Snuffy, and they didn't want to go out of the four walls and talk to the non-believers. Why didn't they want to do that? Because they weren't secure enough in knowing who they were, and they never let the anointing actually pour through them because they thought that that was only for those who had a microphone. But folks, I'm here to tell you, it's not for those who have a microphone. And if all you want is a microphone, you shouldn't have a microphone. If you're not actually actively being a born-again Christian who is a follower of Christ, doing what Jesus taught us to do, go ye therefore now, lay hands on the sick, cast out demons. If you're not doing those things, no condemnation. But this is the season to start doing those things. Some of you don't know you're anointed, but you're anointed. You have permission. I release you by faith to go forth and do the work of the Lord. And don't wait to feel something before you do something. Step out and then you'll experience the fullness of God. People are like, well, yeah, I don't know. when I pray... People don't get healed. Well, if that's the belief that you hold, it's no wonder you're not praying for anyone. And if you're not praying for anyone, how are you going to see anybody get healed? People don't see the miracles and the breakthroughs and the powerful things that God does without stepping out on a limb. And if you're not worried about your own reputation and all you care about is just giving glory to God, then you'll step out and you'll say, you know what? I don't care if I'm scared. I don't care if they don't like me. I don't care if the door slams on my face. I'm going to go do something about the hope that is in me. Amen? Yes. 
Whew, I'm excited about this gospel. This gospel is the, man, the power of God unto salvation. Here we go. Um, he said, I'm exposing the occult. That's what's happening right now. The Lord is exposing the occult and all witchcraft will be laid bare. Ooh, I love this. It will be laid bare before the one to whom we must give an account. So <laughs> this is a call to step out of darkness. If you're in witchcraft, in fact, those of you who are afraid, chances are fear leads to control. Control is rebellion. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. If you got afraid, you might just want to repent for that because that's a sin. And if you're not yet perfected in love, you will be afraid. But you need to know Jesus loves you. He 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 could not love you more. And he doesn't love you because you did something right because you weren't even born when he died on the cross. That proves your performance had nothing to do with it. And some people are having an identity crisis as leaders in churches and leaders of ministries and worth worship people who aren't allowed to come together and you know what they're doing they're, they're not even sure who they are they don't even feel worth anything some of them are feeling unworthy some of them are feeling like gosh i don't even know if i found my way i don't know what i'm going to do with myself well listen if your performance if your life is built on your ability to perform and then you don't have the opportunity to perform that's when you find out who you are Amen. and i'm here to tell you you're a child of god and no one can take that away from you and when he puts his word in your mouth and chooses you as an anointed vessel, who are you? Who am I to say no to the living God who literally bankrupt heaven by giving his greatest gift, Jesus, his son? Jesus, the son of God, was sent by his father to show us the father. Jesus said, I, I, I hear people all the time say, oh, you know, I hope God shows up. I hope God shows up. I hope God shows up. Guys, God showed up. He showed up over 2,000 years ago. Jesus walked the earth. Not only did he show up, but he's still here yeah. because he poured out his spirit on all flesh. The same spirit that raised Christ did it is alive in you. So now you are Christ in the earth as his ambassadors and his representatives seated in heavenly places, joint heirs and co-laborers, all authority I give to you. What are you going to do about it? Eat potato chips and complain that the world went crazy? Or are you going to go out and plunder hell and populate heaven? Find somebody who doesn't know about the hope that lies within you. Lift somebody up. Build somebody up. Exhort them. Prophesy. Declare the word of the Lord. This is the season, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. I get excited about the gospel. <laughs> okay, so he said, I have shown in these troubled times the value and need to be saved. I have shown in these troubled times the value and the need to be saved. We need to be saved. See, the dying world doesn't know that they need saved unless there's turbulence. You don't care about a lifeboat unless the boat is sinking. You don't care about a life preserver unless something bad's about to happen. You start thinking, man, I better preserve my life, right? But those who lose their life will find their life. The Lord's saying, give me your life so that you can't lose your life. But if you hold on to yourself, if you hold on to your resource, if you hold on to everything and say, it's mine, this is mine, stay away, and then you're governed by fear. If that's you, just say, you know what? I'm not living that way anymore. I decide I'm not going to put myself under that kind of pressure. I'm going to just trust God. Lord, I repent for being my own Lord. I repent for being prideful. I repent for thinking that I could trust just in my own self and leaning on my own understanding. I'm sorry, Lord. I know it's not about me. I know it's not about how many likes or shares I get on Facebook. God, I know that my significance is not in my ability to perform or preach from a pulpit. That my significance, that my importance and value has nothing to do with how much is in my bank account. Lord, you sought me and you bought me with your own blood. That you called me saved before I even was. Those you foreknew, you predestined to be called sons and daughters of God. You went ahead of time and paid the price for me so that I could walk in this redeemed state of consciousness, knowing that you would never leave me and never forsake me. You said anything I need, you would provide because you are my provider. I don't have anything because everything I am and everything that I have is yours. And Lord, I thank you, you've trusted us, your people, to be stewards 
that out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water, that we become the resource to the nations that are hurting and broken and have need. But in your kingdom, when they gathered together in the book of Acts, not one had a need among them. Why? Because they shared everything that they had. They saw it all as it's ours. It's not mine, and it's yours. It's yours, or it's mine. It's ours. It's us. It's we. It's he. Jesus loves you. You can't mess up the love of God. It's unconditional. And then finally, he says this. He said, I am putting on display all over social platforms the power of one witness inviting more to be a witness. My goodness, he is inviting us to be witnesses, to be witnesses. I love this about God. Uh, 1 Samuel, in, in, in 1 Samuel 30, verse 8, chapter 30, verse 8, it says this. He, he, he was talking here, David needed direction from God. And David, you know, here he's a man after God's own heart. He had done a bad thing with Bathsheba. We know that he committed adultery. But here's David, a man after God's own heart. This is an amazing thing. So while he was in a low, low place, he asked God. He asked God a question. You remember? He said, shall I pursue this troop? I mean, there's an army that's coming to get him. He knows they're coming. And he says, look at him. Look at his faith. They're pursuing him to kill him. He's a mighty man, but he's in trouble. There's an army that's supposed to be coming to get him. And he says to the Lord, shall I pursue this troop? Can you imagine the faith? Imagine a whole army of people is coming to try to take you out. Come and try to overthrow you and your, your, your demographic, your, your sphere of influence. They're going to they're gonna come and try to just take you out, let's say. And he says to the Lord, shall I pursue this troop? In other words, shall I go out and get them? They're coming to get him. He's like, shall I go? Imagine the kind of faith. He says, shall I overtake them? Shall I go after them? They're coming for me. Shall I go after them? And shall I overtake them? He's asking the Lord. And, and look, at, look at how he wants God's direction. So the heart is, I'm not just going to go out and try to take out enemies. Why would you try to fight a battle you're not even assigned to? Just because you're a mighty warrior doesn't mean you need to go fight a bunch of battles. Don't fight any battle you're not assigned to. Just a little word to wisdom. If you do that, you will wear yourself out and you will waste your time because God doesn't want us to just fight battles to fight battles. Imagine Samson was out there, you know, jawbone of an ass, taking out a thousand Philistines. Well, that's great, but he was assigned to fight that battle. And you know, that, that was the reality of God. He's that same God today. I believe if you were anointed of God to take out an army, he could put power on you like Samson, strength of Samson, heart of David, nothing being impossible for God, and he could cause you to rise up as a mighty leader. But we have to pay attention to what the Lord's saying. Here's what God said to him in, res in a, a response. He said, pursue. I love that. <laughs> Here's God Almighty. David's asking, you know, they're going to come kill me. Should I go after them? And God says, pursue. Come on. Wait a minute, God didn't say, stay in your homes and put on a ventilator. Oh no, poke holes in your respirator and hope and pray to me that you won't get this virus that's going around. Listen, I know there's real sickness in the earth, but before the talk of the COVID-19, people were already dying. I don't know if you've read the news, but all these accounts, it was anybody who died of anything was COVID-19 automatically. It's crap, I'm just telling you, it's a load of junk. Okay, the truth is, you're not going to get sick unless you're afraid and biting your nails and hunkering down and not obeying the Lord. You're not going to get sick. And if you are sick, maybe it's just because you don't know that Jesus healed you over 2,000 years ago. He said, by my stripes, you are healed. I have felt sickness come on my body many times. And I said, nope, I don't get sick. I'm healed in Jesus' name. And pow, that thing was gone. And I know that your faith can do the same thing. Amen? Amen? Don't be worried about getting something. The only thing you're going to get is empowered by the Holy Ghost <laughs> and fire. Hallelujah. So God answers him, and he says this. He says, pursue. Come on. Who's going to yeah. pursue yeah. the will of God? Who wants to pursue? Come on. He's raising up an army. He wants mighty warriors who are not going to cower back in the face of the devil. You're worried about what a politician's saying? He's not in charge. The people put him in the seat. Come on, people. Let's get over this thing. Yeah. God answers, pursue, for you shall overtake them and without fail recover all. 
He's not even saying, you're just going to be able to take out that army because I'm empowering you by my blessed Holy Spirit. He's saying, not only are you going to take out that army that's facing you down, but you're going to rise up and everything that you lost, you're going to receive back recompense in Jesus' name. Recompense what you lost, I prophesy. It will be returned to you. And not one jot or tittle from the letter is going to pass by without being fulfilled. For the Lord himself will fulfill every jot, every tittle, every promise, Every word of prophecy, I declare you blessed and highly favored, and there's no weapon formed against you that's allowed to prosper. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. I haven't preached in a while, so it's kind of fun to be able to talk with y'all. <laughs> so I got a, a couple scriptures I'll share with you, and uh, I just believe the Lord is, is highlighting certain portions of scripture uh, right now. If you want to take your Bible out, if you have your Bible, uh, Isaiah, take a look at Isaiah. 40, Isaiah 40, this is about Israel being released from captivity. Come on, who's in their house saying, man, I'd like to be released to this whole quarantine season? Well, it's about to go, it, it's about to be over because yeah. a lot of things are being exposed. The truth yeah. is coming yeah. out. Jesus is speaking to a people and people are becoming radical and emboldened. You know what they tried to do? I don't know if you guys know the, the stories. I know there's a lot of conspiracy theories. There's a lot of junk. You got to be able to sift through it. But there's a few facts that, that they, 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 there's known facts that came out. I actually watched the video. I don't know if you guys watched the video, um, but it was Mr. Gates. And he was, uh, he was presenting at the Pentagon why we need to introduce certain types of viruses so that we can attack the portion of the brain that causes people to be radical. Because if they're too radical, then they socially, you know, they just don't fit in in society. And quite frankly, we need to be able to tone them down. So we're going to just release these certain combinations of viruses so that we can make sure that, that socially that people are being able to get along. And, and, and really what it is, it's an attack from the spirit called Antichrist that wants to tone down or put out the fire of God. But let me tell you something. You can't put out the fire of God. And if you try to do it, look at what happened in days of old. It only led to the prosecu the persecution, only led to the spreading of the gospel. So if you want to spread the gospel there, Mr. Genius, then what you ought to do is you ought to do just what you're doing because you just set it up for God. And guess what? He's about to release fire on the people. You're about to see the glorious bride of the church rise up in this hour, and you're going to see massive salvation. And yeah, you might have taken out a few people with your evil little plan. But guess what? God's about to pour his spirit out on all flesh. And you're going to see the spirit of the Lord rise up on a people. And you will not be able to stop an army that God sets in motion. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So in Isaiah 40, here's what he said. Come. Ooh, I love this. Isaiah 40. It's about Israel's release from captivity. He, he, it starts out this way. It's comfort for God's people. If you need some comfort, this is your moment. He says, comfort, comfort my people. I love the word comfort because Holy Spirit is the comforter. Amen. Look at you got a comforter on right now. It's so, something about being by a fire. If you're a little cold and you put on the comfort. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Doesn't it feel nice? And then so I he says, real thing <laughs> he says, comfort, comfort my people says your God. Comfort my people. I think this is a comforting message. It's a message that the Lord just wants you to know. Everything is going to be okay. If you have a need, I know where my help comes from, and I hope you do too. His name is Jesus. If you have a need, he will meet your need. He's not late. He's right on time. If you don't have it, you don't need it. If you need it, you will have it. Get ready. God's about to provide according to his riches and glory. You might have looked at your bank account and thought, there's not enough money at the end of the month. But listen, Jesus He's about to replenish. He's about to supply you. He's about to throw you a lifeline for your deadline. And he's going to restore whatever the devil told, stole from you. It's called recompense. And he's going to do it. I know it. He's going to do it again. And he's going to do it again. Here we go. He says, speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed. That her hard service has been completed that her sin has been paid for and that she has received from the Lord's hand double 
for all of her sins. I love this because they were laboring so hard, trying to uh, uh, perform, to fulfill all of these laws. There was like, what, 620 Levitical laws, so many laws, how are we going to do it all? But they were so uh, uh, burdened by the, by the undone, by the unfinished, by all the obligation to perfectly fulfill by their own performance all of the law. And, and Jesus comes and he's like, I'm the, I'm the lamb who was slain for the sins of the world. I'm just going to meet every single one of those laws for you. And then I'm going to call you my righteousness. Isn't that amazing? Jesus goes ahead and fulfills. It doesn't mean we don't obey God. It just means that he basically started us off with a, a brand new beginning. He's like, you know what? You're no longer a sinner saved by grace, but now I call you a saint. And some of us don't feel very saintly, but let me just say, you are, if you receive Christ and have been born again, received Christ and was filled with the Holy Spirit, yielded to the Lord and said, yes, I'm yours. My heart is yours. Fill me, God. You have been born again. And when you've been born again, you are no longer who you once were. You're a new creation. You've been given the mind of Christ and your spirit needs food and you're being fed right now. Your spirit is just absorbing the goodness of the living water. Uh, the food is to do the will of the Father, Jesus said. And he said, my word is his life. And he said, eat my flesh. The word became flesh. He's saying, eat my words. Eat what I say to you. Consume what I'm speaking to you and I will fill you with faith and you will not be dismayed in times of trouble. Amen? Okay, so then it, it goes into saying, uh, 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 <laughs> I just, I, I'll get so excited. There's so much to share, and I don't want to share it all. I only share little parts of what I have here. Uh, but he said, here it is, uh, that uh, she received from the Lord's hand a double. Okay, so I just released that over you, a double portion, double portion grace, double portion blessing. Uh, by the way, just a thank you, everyone who's watching. Thank you for sharing this post. If you haven't shared it, share it with somebody else because I believe this message is a very uh, important and timely message. So you could really bless somebody else. I'll, I'll do an invitation to receive salvation if you have friends that aren't saved. Uh, it's been so fun to see so many people get saved during these times. Uh, I'm seeing that the, the harvest is more plentiful today than it was, you know, five, six weeks ago. There's more and more people getting saved because they're starting to see how in the world there's uncertainty. But with God, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you need somebody in your family to be saved, share the post. You never know who's going to receive this. But I believe that, that God is about to do something uh, next level. Your family uh, is going to be exceedingly blessed. There's a new beginning. Uh, some of you are getting a supernatural reset. The Lord's about to launch you, some of you, into international ministry. Uh, I believe he's removing hindrances and roadblocks. Uh, he's touching hearts to make sure that hearts are right before him so he can entrust you uh, to do some very unique things right now. Uh, so there's a voice, a voice of one calling in the desert. Prepare the way of the Lord. You remember John the Baptist? He was shouting, prepare the way of the Lord, right? Eating locusts and honey with his leather belt and, you know, washing in the river. You could just see him just nibbling on, on locusts, dipping it in honey. I mean, gosh, that sounds like a, that nature guy. And, you know, it's interesting because some of us are fretting because we only have like five cans of beans and, uh, and four boxes of cereal instead of our normal seven boxes of cereal. And, and we're worried about that. Listen, if you're not eating locusts and honey, then you're pretty, pretty much doing great, man. I would say that you're on track. You know, some of you are getting like government assistance right now. And you're like, what am I going to do? And you're like, and God's like, what are you worried about? I mean, you got food in your cupboard. You got gas in your car. And you're all worried about what? Like nothing bad is going to happen to you. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Anyway, get your mind encouraged. Get your heart you know, steadfastly focused on the Lord. Be fixed on God. Don't just feed yourself bad news all day and watch the news and wonder what's going to happen next because uh, just read the Bible. You'll know what's going to happen next. Here it is. A voice is calling out. So the, the Lord's speaking. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for the, for the Lord. Every valley shall be raised up. Every mountain and hill be made low. The rough ground shall become level and rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord 
will be revealed. This is what he's doing right now. He's preparing for a massive outpouring of his spirit. And when he's present, the glory is there. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit is Jesus in the house. This morning when I saw that vision and we were in prayer and all of a sudden Jesus shows up and I see Jesus over there. I'm not going to say anything, but I knew my mom she said she feels when the Lord comes. I didn't purposely say anything about seeing Jesus step into the room, but I saw Jesus. I saw what he was wearing. He had his white robe and his curly wavy hair and he was smiling. He wasn't fretting. He wasn't worried. Come on, if he's not worried, why would you be worried if you're his house? <laughs> I saw Jesus and there he was and I'm like, wow. And I didn't say anything. And all of a sudden my mom goes, did Jesus just come in the room? I go, yep. She goes, I got the chills all over my body. I feel electric. And I said, that's because he's standing right there. She's like, what is he wearing? I said, well, he's wearing his white robe. He's got this blue sash. And his, she says, his hair all wavy. And I said, yeah. yeah. And she's like, wow. And she's just like, wow. Like God can give you the ability to see in the spirit. You need to know that in the beginning of what I said, the Lord said, talk about the unseen. Why? Because the unseen becomes manifest when we talk about it, some people are like, I'm not talking about what people can't see. If I talk about what they can't see, they're going to think I'm weird. What are you worried about people thinking you're weird? The whole Bible's weird. It's a whole book of faith. It's all about like stuff that happened in here is real and still happens today. And some people read it like it's something that's like, oh, here's how God was, as if he's not alive. He is a living king. He's not a dead letter. We need to get this. Jesus is here with us yeah. to move through us as his hands and feet on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord. That's what I love about this. And the manifested presence of the Lord is what? Is revealed in all mankind together. Come on, say together. 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 All mankind together will see it. The glory of the Lord. You know, you can see the glory of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it when it comes upon a person. I've seen the people like glow in the glory. I've seen people's faces just light up. Mm -hmm. You know, I had somebody come up to me and say, um, I just wanted to talk with you, uh, Pastor. Uh, I, I don't know why I'm here, but uh, yeah, I saw you downstairs. I, was, I serve as a pastor in, in companies, right? And, and, uh, and it's, it's fun. I'm a chaplain for companies in the corporate world. My wife and I do that. And uh, this guy comes into my office and he's like, yeah, well, I just want to ask you a question. I, uh, I'm not sure how to put this. He said, well, when I saw you, I saw light. And I said, you saw light? And he says, yes. And, and I'm just wondering, well, what is that? And I said, what is that? Um, I had to think about, well, yeah, what is that? And I was like, oh, yeah, the Bible says we are the light of the world. Yeah. Come on, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Salt causes people to thirst. Thirsty people drink. Why? Because when you're thirsty, you're looking for the water. Jesus like the water I give you, you'll thirst no more. In other words, you'll be eternally satisfied by the Holy Spirit. So he's saying, be salty. Don't go and hide your light under a bowl or a basket, hunkering down in your cave at your house and ordering up the, uh, uh, delivering the groceries and the Uber Eats. Listen, that's fine. I'm just saying, Get out and shout. Go out your front door and yell over the fence at your neighbor. Hey, Jesus is on the throne and he never stopped reigning. He's got a plan and it's a good plan. He's about to prosper you like never before. Don't worry about a thing. This thing's about over. The wind blows where it wants to, but God's about to fill your sails. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so that was the vision. I saw Jesus with this mask. And I saw this huge sail, and it wasn't yet up yet. You know why? Because the wind wasn't blowing. But Jesus started to pull on that mask, and I saw mask over faces. That represents hypocrisy. The Lord saying, take the mask off and be real. Come on, church. Don't try to pretend you got it all together. Come on. Man, you've been sinning in the closet, but God's in there with you. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, Jesus sees everything. So why pretend he's not there when you don't want him to be there? He doesn't disappear because you decide to sin. He sits there and has to watch it. Stop making God watch you. I believe God is not leaving you. He's not going to forsake you. And he is about to show up. And he's about to purify some hearts in this hour. And we need leaders. 
to be pure in their motives. Amen? Come on. I want to have a church where we never talk about the offering. But please give. We need money. <laughs> yeah. Some of you are like, should I give? Should I stay or should I go? Should I check out? He just talked about money. Uh-oh. Uh, honey, hunker down. Batten down the hatches. Here, let's turn off this post and watch somebody. No, no, no. If your heart is to give, you look for opportunities. Yeah. You look for a reason to give. You don't go, well, I don't know if they did the offering just right. Well, they spent 15 minutes, and I like it when they spend five. Somebody told me, well, you guys pass the bucket, so I'm not going to give. I'm like, okay, well, what if we don't pass the bucket? Well, then, yeah, I don't really like that either. I'm like, okay, so what you're really saying is you don't want to give. Okay, that's fine. But God loves so he gives, right? Amen? We need to love and give and love and give. And the way we give is... is is really just coming out of that place of love. So when you give, you're showing Jesus. You're showing love. And you're showing, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to battle the spirit of fear. And so if you want to give, you can text to give. There's a number on your screen. Text to give. Your gift goes to good soil. We're presenting the word of, of God all over the nations of the earth. And we're believing that when the gate fully opens, that we're going to send out an army into the nations. And we're going to see revival like never before. And so you want to sow into some good ground? This is your moment. Go ahead and do it. And uh, if you have good intentions, you, you say, oh, yeah, I'll do it later. Just make sure you do. Make sure you follow through because God will bless you. And we hear so many stories about people being blessed when they sow into the ministry. So thank you so much, you guys, for helping us to bring revival, not just in our city, in our region, but in the nations of the earth. Uh, some of you uh, helped us with Awaken the Planet this year. We need more volunteers for that massive uh, event. It takes a lot of people. It takes provision. We need... Uh, we need helpers. We need workers. So if you want to be a worker, just PM us. Let us know, and we'll put you on a list, and you'll be notified at the right time, okay? So here we go. So moving forward, I'm going to share this last part, and uh, and I love, I love that God gives Scripture. Here, he gave me Romans 9. Romans 9. Take a look at Romans 9. Let's just look at Romans 9, 10. Let's start at 10. So Romans 9, 10. And look at what it says here. Not only that, but Rebecca's children had one and the same father. Our father, Isaac. Isaac means laughter. Uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So joy is a third of the kingdom. Whenever I see Isaac, I just see the Lord laughing. I know, I know he loves the name Isaac. So here he says, our father, Isaac. Yet before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose in election might stand not by works but by him who calls she was told the older will serve the younger just as it is, as it is written jacob i loved but esau i hated isn't that strange jacob i loved but esau i hated some people wonder like what's that talking about right then it says what then shall we say is god unjust so now there's this opportunity to judge god not a good plan. He's the only righteous judge. But it says, not at all. Is it that God's unjust? Not at all. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It's really important to know that God can do whatever he wants. He's sovereign, but he heals. Some of us have made this idea uh, that if God does something good for us, then he loves us. If God doesn't do the thing that we want him to do, then somehow we don't matter to God, so let's just live for ourselves and be our own God. But here's the thing is most people who have experienced any time in this world have, have experienced trouble, disappointment, uh, breakthroughs, and, dis and, 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 and unfortunate things, uh, pain and, 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 and you know disappointment and things. But the Lord is saying, hey, I have mercy who I have mercy on. I have compassion who I have compassion on. So just know God loves you and he's not trying to um, he's not trying to punish his people, but he does discipline us. He disciplines us cuz he's a good father. A good father loves his kids enough to discipline them. What what if God had to correct you and you didn't like the correction, but then God revealed to you that without the correction, you would have gone right off a cliff. Would you be glad for the correction or would you say, no, I would have preferred the cliff, right? I mean, most people will be like, oh, 
I didn't know that there was a cliff ahead, but that's the reason I had to be corrected there so that God could prepare me to be a little more sensitive to him so that when I got a little closer to the cliff, his voice got a little more stern, a little bit louder. Maybe he had to allow for an adjustment in the circumstances to teach us something. He didn't do the COVID-19, but he's brought us into a place where he's bringing us through the COVID-19. And this thing isn't as big as it seems. A lot of it is hype. A lot of it is smoke and mirror. Yes, there's been some people who have been hurt. Yes, there has been some people who have been lost. But I know this for 100% sure. The Lord is with you and he has a glorious plan. And one of his th um, things that he really wants to do right now is get his people back to the place of intimacy, back to the place of recognizing we are anointed. It's not, oh, that guy's so anointed. No, it's you're anointed. She's anointed. He's anointed. That little kid with childlike faith is anointed and his faith can move a mountain. Uh, let the killed ch let the children rise up. Let the children rise up. Don't don't let anything kill your faith. And if your kids want to pray for somebody to be healed, encourage that. Don't let anything kill the anointing in you. Don't let sin patterns drain you of the anointing. You need the anointing to break the yoke, which is the bondage to sin. Amen. And then finally, when you look at the scripture, Romans, again, I'm in Romans 9, if you're just tuning in, Romans 9, <laughs> 10 through 26. Okay, it said, uh, one of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us for who resists his will? But who are you, O man, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to who formed it? Why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for noble purses, uh, purposes and some for common use? In other words, who being formed and fashioned by God would tell the one who's forming them, you don't know what you're doing, right? So we need to trust that God has a plan and that he's going to work out his purpose. I love this. I will call them my people who are not my people. Do you remember when the Lord said, call those things that are not as though they are? I've been walking around, man, Jesus really loves you. And some people will argue with me, no, he doesn't love that person. They're not saved. Whoa. What? There's this mindset out there that they think that if they haven't said the prayer to get born again, God doesn't love them yet because they're not yet his people and he loves his people. I'm here to tell you God loves you. I don't care who you are. If you're a person that doesn't even like him, you might be an atheist, an agnostic, a, a, an insomniac. I don't know what you are. Jesus loves you. He loves you just the way you are, but too much to let you stay the same. So he's going to take you from glory to glory. Some of you are on here uh, that you might accuse me. And perhaps you needed to watch this to understand that God loves you even so. He doesn't accuse you. He loves you. He's not looking for what's wrong with you. He's looking at what's right with you. He's watching to see how he can assist you as you will lean not on your understanding and turn to him. So I love this. He said, I will call them my people who are not my people. And I will call her my loved one who is not my loved one. I love that. So we need to love like that. We need to love people the way he loves us. And of course, he loves us so much beyond what we're able to fully understand. So somebody needs to know Jesus loves you. He's got a calling and a purpose on your life. This is just the beginning. And because of these strange times that we're in, there's never been more evidence that God's about to move on the planet like never before. This is the moment in history that we have been waiting for. We were born for such a time as this. We were born to see a massive outpouring of the Holy Spirit. What's that even going to look like? I mean, people, you're going to see this. I mean, I know that a lot of churches are struggling. Uh, churches are closing. Churches are, some pastors are just saying, I don't want to do this anymore. I totally get the pressure that is on leaders. I'm so glad God didn't answer our prayer and give us a building last year. But listen, and but God's about to give us a building. We're excited about it. And it's probably after this thing blows over and everything opens up and boom, somebody will give us a debt-free building and we'll be excited. And we want to have revival events. And we're going to have revival events. And we're going to go back in the Tacoma Dome and do Awaken the Planet events this year again. And it's going to be glorious. But you know what's greater than all the stuff that we could do with God? Is just being with God himself. Being alone with Jesus. This is such a beautiful time that we can release 
our cares, that we can cast our cares on him who cares for us, that we can fear not, do not be afraid, for God is with us, that we can actually trust the one who would do anything for us, but he just wants to know that we're willing to seek first the kingdom and, and his righteousness. Make it all about him. Give him all the glory. If you're not praying for people and seeing people get healed on a regular basis, just know that you can begin right now. You can begin right now. People are being healed right now, and it's exciting. And it's, it's exciting. Tammy, can you share that story? Will you share that? That's a really cool story. You got a couple minutes. You got a couple minutes if you got to finish your food. We're, we're having a potluck. Hallelujah. It's like we're having a meal. But I mean, you know, you guys are so awesome. Thanks, everybody. I know I'm looking in the screen over here, but I also want to address you all that came out. And I just want you guys to know, man, God has such a glorious plan. And look at this, how God has brought us together. I mean, Jesus gathered the, the disciples I mean, you could you could just see you know Peter over by the by the shore and and John over there and you know and and Jesus just going and say, saying come you know he goes over to James the son of Zebedee and he calls him in you know he's like he just he finds people and he sees what they'll be and he calls them that now as if they've already arrived at that place. You know, it's so great that God can look at us through his lens of grace and not see our flaws, our blemishes, our hang-ups and our hiccups. He looks at us and he goes, you know what? You're perfect. And we're like, well, I'm so not perfect. And it's like, I want to be perfect. I want to look perfect. I try to fix my hair. And the Lord's like, no, no, no. I don't care about any of that. And so this morning, the vision I saw was this giant boat. It was an old school fishing boat. And the Lord was spending all this time preparing the sail. And I'm just like, the winds are coming. We got to get this sail up on the boat. It was like I was looking at the boat from the outside. I wasn't even on the boat yet. And Jesus is on the boat and he's messing with the sail. He's like arranging the sail. You know, he's working with the nets. He's mending the nets. I'm like, what's that mean? And he's showing me, well, the mending of the nets is there's relational breaches and connectivity. The spirit of jealousy, accusations that divided people, breaches and relational connectivity. And God was bringing those together. He's mending those relationships, weaving us together. The body of Christ is like a tapestry. And he's saying, he's shouting, no, no, this is where it's going down. This is where it's going to happen. And he lifts, he lifts up, he lifts up the net and he begins to raise it up the mast. He's raising, he's raising up the sail up the mast. And I'm like, the sail's being risen up. And then I realized, oh, oh, okay. So the mast, the, I realized that that big, tall mast that the sail was going to be hung from represented a giant heavenly staff. That's spiritual authority. That he had to prepare the boat to be able to handle. The, the boat always represents ministry or the church. He had to prepare the boat to be able to handle that, that spiritual authority so that he himself could put the sail up. And I saw him raising up the sail. He was mending, he was fixing the sail, he was adjusting it, there were some holes, he had to patch some things, and then he just goes like this. He started doing this, and I saw the sail go up, 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 the, the mast. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, that's a huge sail, and only, when the sail was put all the way up into position, humble ourselves, he lifts us up. The sail is us doing this. It's like, I'm yours, God. I surrender. I'm not mine. Do it your way. It's not, I had it my way. It's Jesus. It's all about you. I live for you. I'm not here for me. I don't have to fear my life. I already lost my life when I gave it away. I can't die because I'm already dead, because I am now alive in you. The once I was here, but now I'm not here because you're here, because it's you living in me. And all of a sudden, bam, God just shows me the wind comes. <sighs> no longer we who live, but Christ who lives in us. The life we live, we live under Christ. We're here to glorify God and for no other reason. And all of a sudden, he sends the wind. He sees the hearts are ready. The hearts are ready. The hearts have been made right. They've been brought out of turbulent times and brought into full dependence on God. And now we're ready to receive the wind, church. <laughs> the wind. <laughs> so the wind's blowing, and then the sail just goes. Poof, it just fills up. And then the boat just goes like this. You ever seen a boat just the wind hits? And boom, and then the mast just starts pushing on the boat, and the boat starts moving. 
And so I really believe that the Lord's saying, I'm about to send the wind. You needed to be prepared. You needed to be tested. You needed to be able to see that you had spiritual authority, to be able to walk in spiritual authority, to begin to pray. Even when you didn't believe it, it could happen. You knew it was God who did it anyway. And all of a sudden you see it, you taste it, you know, and then boom, you're ready for the wind. When the wind comes, the whole boat moves and everybody on it gets blessed. And that's what's happening right now. It's super excited. I mean, I'm looking around. I see many of you like... It's amazing, Ellie, how God has used you so powerfully in the worship and the heart that you have to raise up worshipers. It's going to be so amazing. I, I just can't wait to see what your guy's going to look like. That's going to be <laughs> awesome. But look at how the Lord's matchmaking. I mean, we just saw two couples right here that divinely were brought together in, in an orchestrated, God-ordained time frame. You were all waiting for each other, and now look, you found each other. We got two weddings. Now, they just got married, and now you guys are next. This is incredible. And God doesn't want us to be alone. He's got somebody special for every single person in this room. Every one of you ladies and some of you, your, your spouse, you didn't realize is as great as they are, but they're going to become the best version of themselves as you become the best version of yourself. So um, can Tammy and John, can you come over? Whew, let's have you just tell your, your testimony, and uh, and we'll end with this testimony. This is really powerful, guys. So sh yeah, just share kind of like how God brought you together in that thing you shared with me. That was great. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. You guys, this is Tammy and John. So go ahead, you guys. Tell your story, whatever God said. Hallelujah. Well, one afternoon at the Rock, we were doing worship, you know, and, and I was on the floor and, and John was across the way and all of a sudden I had an open vision and I saw myself as a bride and him as a groom and I go, oh, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> I did not, I, was, I didn't know, it was an open vision. So I was like, huh, interesting, okay, so we'll see how that works out. <laughs> and then I, I prayed to the Lord, I said, Lord, would you confirm your that vision and give the same vision to Nathan and have him confirm it to me? And I'll know it's real. And so on a Friday night, we're doing worship, and Nathan showed up kind of like about 10 minutes after we started into worship, and I could I sense a presence of like just the, sh the whole atmosphere shifted. And I was like on my knees, I look over, I'm like, oh, he's here, and some other people are here. I could just felt the atmosphere shift. And it was like, oh, we have a complete crowd of people here to worship you. And the Lord gave him a vision that he saw me and John getting married, and he came up to me afterwards and confirmed the word, that vision to me. And he did not know that that's what I asked the Lord. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you yeah. did. You came up to me and you said, I just saw you guys during worship that you guys are going to be married. And I was like, praise the Lord. Because I, I asked the Lord to confirm his, the vision to me. And so he did. Just in case somebody missed it, what you're saying is the Lord showed you, you and John were to be married, mm -hmm. and you said, Lord, if this is from you, mm -hmm. show Nathan, Nathan same. that same thing mm -hmm. and have him come and tell me so that I know that I heard you right. Yeah. And was it that night that God showed you that, or was it before no, that No, it was time? before that time. Okay, so it was before it that time. It was a time. few weeks before, and okay. so it wasn't... But it was the first time we were together yeah. in the same place. Exactly. And, well, uh, since that, but you were there and that when I had the vision, but I didn't tell anybody. Oh, but you didn't tell anybody. I didn't anybody. tell nobody yeah, I had the vision yeah. for a That's while. That's a word right for there. For him, I waited and I said, God. Oh, you didn't tell him either? No. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so she gets a vision. <laughs> And she's like, wow, God, is it's that right? It's and then she's vision. just like, well, if that's true, then show Nathan. That's pretty random because she could have said show any person, right? But she said show Nathan. So then it was a couple weeks later, first time we were all together in the same place. And you know what? I looked at, I looked at her and I saw her in her wedding garment. I saw her in her bride gear. You know, she had the, the whole thing on top here and the whole beautiful dress. And then I looked over and I'm like, wow, John looks amazing. And I saw John in this really nice tux. And I'm like, wow, so John's going to be in a tuck. She's going to be, in, oh, they're going to be, oh. <laughs> and then I saw myself standing in front of them. And I'm just like, no way, like they're going to get married. I just knew. Yeah. So, you know, you, they teach you when you're learning to prophesy. Don't ever prophesy weddings, right? Because yeah. <laughs> if, if it doesn't work out, like that's not good, right? Yeah. <laughs> but them, I mean, they've been called to be together. And you can just tell the way that they are together. It's just so beautiful. And uh, I told Tammy one time, I said, John's the greatest guy that I know. 
I mean, I, I love all these guys. I love all you guys. I love a lot of you that are watching this. It's amazing. But, but John, he has a unique humility about him. He's just likable. And he's one of the greatest servants that I've ever met. He's served. He's been my MVP at The Rock. I mean, besides my wife. Like, he's one of my no, most is. important I players. And, and, you know, the reason that's so important, you know how I met John, by the way? I met John because somebody asked me if I would help um, them move. And how many people know when somebody asks you to help them move, like that's that's your number one, clear your schedule. Oh yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that at all. I'm like, no way, I don't want to do that. I mean, especially if you're a pastor and you go help somebody move, all of a sudden the whole flock thinks you're the moving guy. Like, dude, go, you know, no, I'm serious. I'm just saying logically, if you help one move, you better be ready to help anybody else who asks. Right? That's just how it is. We're in a service. <laughs> so naturally, I asked the Lord. I just said, Lord, you want me to help him move? You know, this guy, Terry. And I'm like, you want me to move, move help uh, Terry move? And the Lord says, yeah, I want you to help him move. So I'm like, all right, well, God wants me to do it. So that's a different story. So I went over there, and because I went and helped Terry move that day, I met John. And John's <laughs> been at the church ever since serving for years. All I had to do was serve for a day, and then John comes and serves for years. Anyway, that's God saying, look, if you'll just do what I ask, regardless of how it seems, regardless of what you might be thinking, because there's a way that seems right, but in the end, at least to death. So we really got to get into this idea of knowing, man, God knows what he's doing. The more we yield to him, the faster we can accelerate. You need breakthrough? Just be somebody's breakthrough. You need something to happen in your life? Go make something somebody hap something happen for somebody else. It's really about being God's hands and feet to one another. So <laughs> what I love about John, though, is he's like the first one to show up, the last one to leave. I'm not trying to, like, you know, put him on the spot. But he's been so precious, so amazing. And, uh, Tammy, you are such a gift. And we love you. And we love that you and John were ordained to be together. And I love because I forgot that story. And she told me tonight when she got here, it's like, no, I remember asking God that if that if I saw right that John and I were to be married, that he, that he needed to tell you and that you needed to be led of God to tell me. And then that first time I saw her after that, I saw them in their wedding garb and the Lord says, tell her. And I'm thinking, I don't want to prophesy somebody's marriage, you know. <laughs> And I've done it before, but I don't like to do it, right? Because you know you don't want to you don't want to just do that, right? I mean, I've had a lot of people say, well, "Hey, who, who am I supposed to marry? Are they in this room?" You know, they think you're going to tell them. They think you know everything just because you heard God, right? But anyway, this this couple has been amazing. So that is that's a prophetic word, Julia. That's a prophetic word to some of you right now, Ina. Come on, Ina. That's a prophetic word. So, Lord, we release Ina's man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he's German though. So if you say, Ich liebe dich, if you say, Ich hätte gerne ein heavy Watson und die Spezi bitte für Mädchen, I don't think he's going to know what you're talking about. You're going to have to get him a translation book because I think he's American. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but don't worry, he's coming and he's coming fast because this word is the Lord saying, I'm matchmaking. Another one is Michael Kirkland and his beautiful bride sitting right here. Guess what? They were prophesied that they were gonna to come together. And here they are, two precious people. God looked, he searched to and fro for the faithful few that would carry out his purpose together. And he goes, oh, here's the bride right here for Michael. Oh, where, now where's Michael? Okay, how am I gonna get her to meet him? Oh, okay, here, I know. I'll talk to this person or I'll go here or I'll go there or there's a, a website or there's something. And God orchestrates and he puts things together. So if you want a better spouse than, than what you had hoped before, and you're not married, <laughs> then, then start praying. And, uh, then start praying and prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for the Lord to do it. And he'll do it at just the right time. If it hasn't happened yet, well, praise the Lord. You don't want to marry Mr. Wrong anyway. You don't want to marry the wrong guy. You don't want to marry the wrong lady. Yeah, and if you're a lady, you don't want to marry a lady. And if you're a man, don't marry a man. Come on. It's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. I don't care what they told you. They told you wrong. Hallelujah. So get ready. God's about to do something. <laughs> God's about to do something powerful. And if you can't hack it, get your jacket. Okay, here. John, I'm going to give you this coat because this is a 
a prophetic uh, act. And look at John. Oh, where's your other cup? Okay, so this is a prophetic act. That So, Lord, we just release a blessing, a grace on John, Lord, uh, to uh, be able to walk in, in a double portion anointing, a double portion grace, a double portion. You have a coat just like this, but this is a different brand, and it beads the rain like nothing I've ever seen. And it's a, it's good, it's good, it's big. So we just release the anointing. We release double portion grace over your, over your union. Double portion. Okay, we got to go, guys. We'll, we love you guys. Ooh, see you later.